Hello friends, welcome to Expert Guidance. Today in this video, we'll be covering the topic G, covalent bonding of the Section 1 Principles of Chemistry of Edexcel IGCSE Chemistry. And this video will be covering the specification 1.44 to 1.51. Now in this video, we'll be looking over how the covalent bonds are formed between the two uh, nonmetals. How do we represent the dot and cross diagram covalent bonding in simple molecules like hydrogen? Oxygen, oxygen, nitrogen, and some bigger molecules like water, ammonia, carbon dioxide. We will also look over how we can predict the properties of the compounds which are covalently bonded. And we will also see what is the trend of increase in melting and the boiling points of the covalent substances. And we'll also look over the giant covalent structures of diamond and graphite in this section. Now, I would recommend you to watch this video till the end because in the end, we'll also look over some some important conceptual questions on this topic and we'll also see some important key terms because in the end I'll be providing you with a glossary on this topic. So let's begin. Now let's move on to covalent bonding. It is between two nonmetal. It shows the sharing of electron. More than one electron pair gets shared. It will become double or the triple bond. Now what you do is you draw the circle Draw the outer electrons, one with the dot, one with the cross, and see how much electrons both needs to gain full outer shell and share that in the middle. For example, hydrogen has one, needs one more, so you put one electron at the center. Chlorine also needs one, so you put one chlorine electron at the center and draw the rest on the rings. Chlorine each need one, one, so you draw one electron of each at the center and make the rest. Water. Between an oxygen and hydrogen, there's a sharing of one electron each. Nitrogen and hydrogen between each of these circles, sharing of one electron. Carbon and hydrogen, one electron each. But nitrogen both needs three, three electrons to complete the full outer shell. So you draw three electrons in the center. Similarly, oxygen needs two electrons. So you draw two at the center. Carbon, oxygen, you draw two, two each at the center. So oxygen, oxygen is a double bond. Carbon and oxygen is a double bond. Nitrogen and nitrogen is a triple bond. Okay, so I hope these dot and crosses are clear to you. Please make sure you understand them because they are often asked in the exam. Okay, now since we have done covalent compounds, we should know the properties of them. Covalent compounds are classified into simple molecular and giant covalent. Simple molecules are oxygen, chlorine, and methane. They have weak intermolecular forces between them. Therefore, they have low melting and a boiling point. However, their intermolecular forces increases with size. So therefore, polymers which have covalent bonding between them, high melting and a boiling point due to their chain length. Whereas diamond, graphite, and silicon dioxide are the examples which have a giant covalent covalent structure therefore they have strong melting and a boiling point now ionic compound let's compare the difference between ionic and the covalent compound ionic compounds are crystal covalent are solid liquids and gases ionics have high melting and a boiling point covalent have lower melting and a boiling point ionics are hard and brittle covalent are poor conductors ionic usually are soluble in water covalent are not Ionic undergo electrolysis and covalent are flammable. Okay, so now let us see the giant covalent structure diamond and graphite. This is the difference between them. Diamond has a hard, rigid structure, whereas graphite has a layered structure. So diamond is hard, has a high density. Graphite is soft and greasy, lower density. In graphite, three electrons are bonded to form a ring, and one electron is localized for each carbon. These DLD localized electron make it a good conductor. So diamond is an insulator, graphite is a conductor. In diamond, each carbon atom is covalently bonded to four other carbon, giving it a strong rigid structure. In a graphite, carbon atoms are bonded in the form of layer, in the form of hexagon. No covalent bonding between the layers, so they can easily slide past each other. And each carbon is bonded with three other carbon, leaving the four electron delocalized. So diamond has no delocalized electrons used in cutting or in jewelry. Graphite has delocalized electrons. It is used in pencil lids. Okay? So I hope the structure of diamond and graphite is clear to you. Now they can ask you this question why graphite is stuck and uh, slippery or why graphite conduct electricity. So in graphite carbon atoms are bonded in the form of layers in the form of hexagon. No covalent bondings are between the layers so they slide past each other. The layer have only weak intermolecular forces between them. So by applying a little pressure between the layers they can slide past each other making graphite 
graphite soft and slippery on the other hand in graphite carbon atoms are bonded in the form of flare in the form of hexagon no covalent bonding is present between the layers so they slide past each other each carbon atom is bonded with three other carbon leaving the fourth electron as delocalized and these delocalized electrons are mobile electrons which move and conduct electricity okay then there are other two allotropes of carbons which are there in your syllabus it's a fullerene which is a hollow shaped molecule having hexagonal rings like a buckyball also known as buckminster fullerene carbon can be in the form of pentagon or the hexagon ring and it is used as catalyst drug delivery or treating cancer graphene is a layer of interlocking hexagonal ring like a shingle sheet of graphite it is light rigid 100 times stronger than steel perfect thermal conductor it is a better conductor than graphite light and have low density therefore it is used in making copper chips computer chips and flexible electronic display okay and then we have carbon nanotubes which looks like this they are cylindrical fullerene with the length greater than the diameter they have a high tensile strength so they are used in making reinforced composite materials and they have a high electronic conductivity therefore used in electronic conductivity okay so i hope this topic is clear to you the next step as always check the specification do exam style questions on this topic all these notes along with exam style question can be found on my website the link is shared in the description box below if you have any problem leave a comment below we'll reply you as soon as possible or you can come to our website there's a 24/7 chat support till your exam to answer all your queries you can ask any time okay so i hope you like this video do not forget to subscribe to our channel and do like comment and share this video do not forget to click on the bell icon so that you can get the notification of all the latest and useful videos i make before your exam and if there's any specific topic you want me to make a video on then do leave a comment i'll make sure i'll put that up before for your exam. Okay, so I'll see you next in the next video. Till then, happy revising.